Today I'd like to tell you about the prime number 59,281. In order to get started, we have to talk about primes and about decimal expansions. If you take a prime p different from 2 or 5, and you look at the decimal expansion of 1 on p, then you get a repeating decimal. A third is equal to 0.3 reoccurring, a seventh is equal to 0.142857 reoccurring, and so on. So let's define a function a of 1 on p by taking the average of the digits which occur in the decimal expansion of 1 on p. For example, a of a seventh is equal to 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 5 plus 2 plus 7 divided by 6 is equal to 4.5. The function a will be the main player in this video. If you choose a random set of digits from 0 to 9, the expected average of those digits will be 4.5. So if you take the decimal expansion of 1 over p for a prime p, three possible things can happen. The average is more than 4.5, the average is equal to 4.5, or the average is less than 4.5. So Brady, the question is, for a prime number p, which possibility is most likely, which possibility is least likely? That's the first question we'll try to answer today. Let's see what happens for the first few primes. a of a seventh is equal to 4.5. a of 1 over 11 is equal to 4.5. a of a thirteenth is equal to 4.5. a of a seventeenth is equal to 4.5. OK, so something seems to be going on here. A of a 19th is 4.5. A of a 23rd is 4.5. We see that all the primes from 7 to 23 have an average digit sum that is exactly 4.5. This is no accident. It turns out these primes have another property, namely the length of the repeating string, or the period, is even in all these cases. Let's have a closer look at 1 on 7. The decimal expansion is 0 0.142857 reoccurring. Now if we break that up into two pieces, we get 142 and 857. And if we add these numbers together, we get 999. But that means if we pair the digits together, we get 1 plus 8 is 9, 4 plus 5 is 9, 2 plus 7 is 9, and so the average of all the digits is 4.5. And in fact, the same thing happens whenever the period is even. So 1 on 11 is 0 0.09, and 0 plus 9 is 9, 1 on 13, 1 on 17, and so on. So how often is the period even? It turns out that two-thirds of all prime numbers have even period. And this implies that two-thirds of the time, the average digit of 1 on p is exactly 4.5. So that's the most likely outcome. The proof that the period is even two-thirds of the time uses a fancy piece of number theory called the Chebotarev density theorem. OK, so now let's see what happens when the period is odd. a of a third is equal to 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3. a of 1 on 31 is equal to 3.6. a of 1 on 37 is equal to 3, and a of 1 on 41 is equal to 3.6. So these averages are all strictly less than 4.5. But that doesn't last. If you take p to be 53, 
the average of the digits in the decimal expansion of 1 on 53 is just over 4.8. And in particular, it's bigger than 4.5. 53 is the smallest prime for which the average is bigger than 4.5. So now we might ask, if we take more and more primes, is it more or less likely that the average will be bigger than 4.5 or less than 4.5? Well, let's ask the computer. If we take the first 100 primes, 32 have an average digit of less than 4.5, 65 have an average digit equal to 4.5, and only three have an average digit strictly bigger than 4.5. Let's take the first 1,000 primes, or the first 10,000 primes, or the first 100,000 primes. The middle column here checks out beautifully. We said that two-thirds of the primes should have average exactly 4.5, and that matches exactly with the data. But the other numbers are a little strange. They sort of seem like they might be converging, but they certainly don't seem to be converging to the same number. Let's examine a very special type of prime. I want to take primes with the following two properties. First, p is 3 mod 4. Second, the length of the decimal expansion of 1 on p the period, the length of the string that repeats, is exactly p minus 1 on 2. If p is 3 mod 4, then p minus 1 on 2 will be odd. For these numbers, let's consider the average digit minus 4.5. And let's also normalize it by multiplying this difference by p minus 1 divided by 9, just to make it an integer. So 31 is 3 mod 4, and the period is 15. So that's exactly a number of this form. And for 31, b of p is minus 3. Let's write down a few more primes. 43, we get minus 1. 67, we get minus 1. 71, we get minus 7. As we keep going, we notice that bp always seems to be an odd number, and it always seems to be negative. But we saw with 53, we had to go for a while before we saw a prime for which the average was bigger than 4.5. On the other hand, if you're a professional number theorist, you recognize these numbers. Let's just fill in one more prime, 163. In this case, the answer is minus 1. Now, 163 is a famous number in mathematics. It's the last of Gauss's list of imaginary quadratic fields with class number 1. What are the other numbers on that list? Well, the next two largest are 43 and 67. And in fact, this function bp, for the primes occurring in this list, is always equal to minus the class number of the quadratic field of discriminant minus p. So in fact, bp is always negative on this list. And in particular, if p is a prime, that's 3 mod 4, and the period is exactly p minus 1 on 2, then the average digit of 1 on p will always be strictly less than 4.5. So how many primes have both these properties? From this list, there seem to be quite a few small primes. But at the moment, we don't know how to prove that there are infinitely many. However, if we assume the Riemann hypothesis, or more accurately, the generalized Riemann hypothesis, then we can compute the exact proportion of primes that have this property. In fact, a little bit over 18% of primes are of this form. Now, we already noted that two-thirds of the primes have even period, and so average digit exactly 4.5. So 18% is more than half of the primes left over. So 
assuming the generalized Riemann hypothesis, it follows that it's more likely that the average digit on 1 on p is less than 4.5 than the average digit is more than 4.5. Now it also turns out to be true that a positive proportion of primes have average digit of 1 on p strictly bigger than 4.5. It's just that this proportion is smaller than the corresponding proportion whose average is less than 4.5. So this completely answers the question we had at the beginning, as long as we're happy to assume the generalized Riemann hypothesis. So the most likely scenario is that the average digit of 1 on p is exactly 4.5. The next most likely is that the average is less than 4.5, and the least likely is that the average is strictly bigger than 4.5. Having answered this, now we come to our second problem. For a prime p, how small can a of 1 on p be? And how big can a of 1 on p be? Let's first consider how small a of 1 on p can be. Let's take the following prime given by taking 19 ones in a row. This is 10 to the 19 minus 1 divided by 9. If you take this prime and then you write 1 on p, the decimal expansion has a long set of zeros followed by a single 9. But that means that the average digit is just 9 divided by the number of digits, 19 in this case. And so the average digit is really small. Now if instead of taking 19 ones, you take 23 ones, you also get a prime. Or if you take 317 ones, you also get a prime. Or you take 1,031 ones, you also get a prime. These are called prime rep units, and we conjecture that there are infinitely many of those. And if that conjecture is true, we see that really we expect a of 1 on p can be as small as you like. So how big can a of 1 on p be? If you take p to be 53, the smallest prime for which the average is bigger than 4.5, you get that a of 1 on 53 is just over 4.8. But here we come to the prime 59,281. If you take the average digit of 1 divided by 59,281, which has a period of length 95, by the way, is 5.11 or so. In particular, it's bigger than 5. And now we have the following guess. 59,281 is the prime number p which maximizes the average digit of 1 on p. Now this is just a guess. And so now I have a challenge for the viewers. If you can find a prime with a bigger average than this, then I'll give you a beer or equivalent beverage of your choice. Must be 21 or over. Even better, if you prove that 59,281 give the biggest average, I'll give you a bottle of fine Australian wine. This video was sponsored by the National Science Foundation. The National Science Foundation has been supporting mathematics since its inception in 1950. If you would like to support the National Science Foundation, consider moving to the US and paying taxes.